Corruption. Now, last month, we all saw what happened at the only telecom giant that we at Sri Lankan zone, the Sri Lankan Telecom. We saw its chairman, Rohan Fernando, being removed from office in a rush job. This came after the IMF pushed the need to privatize the telecom giant, making all communication, uh, telecommunication service providers in Sri Lanka owned by foreign companies. Now, when we dug a bit deep, we found something very concerning. In a letter written to the Securities and Exchange Commission, a shareholder of Sri Lanka Telecom states that the current non-executive chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom, Mohamed Reyes, has violated the Company Act No. 7 of 2007. The reason they stipulate is that the current chairman of SLT is sitting on boards of other organizations that are in direct conflict with SLT. The organization in question is called Just-in-Time Group, an information and technology company in Sri Lanka. On 23rd of February 2023, Just In Time Holdings Private Limited instituted a court action against Sri Lanka Telecom PLC in case number CA RIT 118 2023 filed at the Court of Appeal, in which mandates the nature of writ of certiorari and prohibition are sought against a decision made by the chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom PLC in his ex officio capacity. This means uh, that the person sitting as the chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom is also on the board of Just-in-Time Holdings by being a non-executive director of its parent company, Agility Innovations. When you sit on both boards, on the board of the company that is suing you and also the company that's getting sued, anyone would say that it looks very unethical and wrong. However, we also found out that the current chairman emailed the secretary of the board confirming his uh, board positions in these conflicting companies on the 21st of July 2023. However, this should have been made known to the board on the day he was appointed as a non-executive board member of SLT on 30th of March 2023. This is why it looks like he has violated the Company Act of 7 of 2007. Now, why am I bringing this issue to you? That is to alert you as to how these types of boardroom coups occur in the private sector and on paper it looks pretty damning and can lead towards corrupt practices. And that itself is my argument. There are a lot of issues like this occurring within the private sector. However, the private sector itself has been cunning enough to point the finger at the public sector corruption thus far deflecting the rotten within. Well, joining me now is parliamentarian and former Minister of Energy, Udaya Gamman Pillar. Good to see you, sir, once again. Thank you very much for being here. Now, as explained, even though there is a lot of effort to curb issues uh, about corruption in the state sector, uh, parliamentarian, we see some institutions uh, just like the SLT, Having the chairmen of the board appointed where he himself is sitting on other boards of companies where they are suing each other, ethically and morally, I'm afraid that's not right. Should the government step in? Well, my age, any company director is duty bound to disclose his conflict of interest and interest in contracts of the company. It is more applicable to quoted companies because quoted companies such as SLT because unlike unquoted companies, quoted companies have raised their capital from the general public. Directors are the trustees who manage uh, uh, funds of the shareholders on behalf of the shareholders. Therefore, directors, that's why I said, directors are duty bound to disclose their, uh, their interest truthfully. When the company is owned by the state, ownership is distributed among entire 22 million Sri Lankans. So, entire nation owns that company. So, the, the burden of truthful disclosure is very high for the state companies like the SLT. Unfortunately, present chairman of the SLT, Mr. Riaz uh, Mihular, has failed in this sacred duty. Just in just in time, Enable and KBSL are three subsidiaries of Agility Innovation, of which Mr. Mueller is a director. These subsidiaries directly deal with telecom and reportedly, telecom has filed action against uh, 
just in time for malpractices, corrupt practices. Therefore, he should have disclosed his uh, relationship with these companies. He can't say I was not aware of because he is the he is the chairman of the audit uh, audit uh, subcommittee of that company. Then uh, he must be aware of uh, the business transaction of these subsidiaries. If he was not aware, then he should have looked into. So, uh, because of this backdrop, I think uh, in this backdrop, I think chairman of Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka Telecom, Mr. Rias Mueller must tender his resignation immediately with a public apology. Indeed, uh, parliamentary in one of the areas that needs uh, to be taken into consideration when addressing corporate sector corruption. Well, corporate sector uh, corruption has been in existence as long as corporate sector has been in existence. Unfortunately, since there is no the so-called opposition for the corporate sector, those are not surface uh, sufficiently and uh, we are glad this kind of uh, things uh, becomes topic of the uh, media as well as the society in general. Government has a duty in respect of uh, ensuring the uh, government has a duty to prevent malpractices in the corporate sector. Firstly, now take a company like SLT. It is not only a state owned company, it is a public quoted company. Then uh, Security and Exchange Commission, SCC is the watchdog. So, SCC cannot turn blind eye, eye to this kind of malpractices. So, SCC has a uh, duty to supervise. When it comes to the banks and finance, the central bank is a regulator. In addition to that, now we have certain accounting standards. Company acts has prescribed certain disclosures in account accounts, but who is here to probe into and ensure the public that these companies have adhered to the legal requirement of disclosures and publications? Unfortunately, there is nobody. Therefore, I think we, the media shall create a public discussion to pressurize the government to bring laws to have a best corporate practices. The companies claim we are very responsible corporate citizen, we do good uh, corporate practices, but uh, there is a huge gap between what they preach and what they practice. Therefore, I think a regulatory mechanism should be brought in to ensure uh, that uh, good governance is practiced by our corporate sector as well. Absolutely. All right. We have to leave it at that. Uh, that was parliamentarian Uday Gamman Pillar, leader of the Pivituru Hela Urumia. Thank you. Let's get uh, some perspective with regard to the law uh, about corporate corruption. Joining me now is President's Counsel Mohan Virakon. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Sir, now in many instances, uh, the state sector corruption is highlighted and laws and regulations are being brought in for just that. But are our laws stronger on the corporate corruption? Yes, Mahesh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, as you all know, corruption in the public sector is rampant and corruption in the private sector is also there. But there is no law to govern private sector corruption up to now. Our Bribery Act, Act has a section, section 70, which says any public servant who with intent to commit. It's all about public servants, so no corporate private entity will be found fall for corruption. Understood. Uh, sir, one of the arguments brought forward uh, is that uh, since the private sector brings in the funding, it's no one else's business. But in most instances, we see that businesses are impacting the public. For an example, in the year 2000, a private bank collapsed due to misappropriation of funds uh, and people who invested in that bank are still suffering. So does that argument have any validity? That argument has no validity, Mahesh, because the private sector organizations are all on the share market. So their owners are diversified and there are so many owners. There can be few large shareholders, but basically it's the people's companies. So they have a responsibility to 
uh, eradicate corruption and bribery. So what I see is the corporate, the corporates in the country which are wholly privately owned are basically less corrupted than the entities which are partly owned by the government. Because what I see is that the when there is a change of government, uh, directors are appointed to certain uh, corporates which the government has shares. So ultimately, it all depends on the uh, the credibility and the uh, whether the directors are good or bad. So basically, a bad director is appointed to a public entity or a private organization with the government has shares can ruin the organization. So that has happened in our country because very few uh, organizations which are the com companies which the government has shares are doing well. Indeed, it makes a lot of sense. All right, we have to leave it at that. That was President's Council Mohan Virakum. I appreciate it. Sir. Short break now. More State of the Nation once we return back in a moment.